Okay, so for conclusion, uh, there are additional resources from SBDC like uh, Growth Will and some of the templates that they can offer you. I really recommend that you work with them, um, maximize the good stuff that's free. Um, and I think I'm just gonna open it up and back to Andy and Jill. I'm curious of, of the people wanting to do S3 mapping, what specifically are you planning to look for in the map? To be honest, I need to play with it a little bit so I fully understand what I'm looking at before I, think it's I have solid response. questions. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a different way of looking at it. You know, and being old school and coming from the tabular spreadsheet way of breaking things down it that yeah you might use that data model but you don't look at it and think about it the same way so it's really interesting and and the other thing is that you are the most valuable component of any analysis of, of any mapping because you know you know where things like natural barriers are like no people don't drive across that river or no they don't come from that part of town. It's just, it's really interesting to, to see how you relate. Um, if actually, after, after you do it, you know, shoot me a message and let me know. I'm curious uh, what you think comes out of it because it, I think it's an interesting experience. It's a lot of fun. A question, because I've attended each of these seminars each mm -hmm. week um, and the bottom line that I'm personally getting is I feel like lightning struck and I have some clients for my business. Um, I'm concerned I won't be able to have lightning strike a second time, um, even though I already have a couple clients, but there's a lot of things that need to be done. And I realized that, and I acknowledged that before I started my business, if I'm feeling overwhelmed, where should I start with the priority? Should the priority be with the, um, communication system? Should it be the sales component? Should it be the operations? What portion should I not 100% focus on because that's not realistic, but what should be the main item that I'm working towards most consistently? Because I feel like there's always different things pulling me in different directions. Well, I would, I would start by, you know, draw a circle. You're going to make a pie chart. Uh, and, and the first great divide in there is how much of your time is on the business versus in the business. So how much time are you spending doing billable client work as opposed to uh, growing and managing the business? So that, that's the first thing. Uh, if you have a lot of time going to billable client work, you're going to need to force yourself to work. And that's in the business. You're going to need to force yourself to work on the business. And you're going to, have to say, okay, I have to put this time or these many hours or this block of space and thought time uh, into my service and support component and my new business component. But I think I would start with, you know, right now, how much is in the business doing what you have to do uh, and realistically what is left over. Okay, thank you. Because after each of these seminars, I'm working on different aspects, but I always feel like I'm not quite done yet. Yeah. <laughs> but then there's more information. So I'm like, oh, wait. Well, you know, and as somebody who's been consulting for a long time, that gets to be a real problem because, um, I, I believe there's one of you, right? There's one Heather Correct. out there and there's, there's there one is. Alan sitting here. <laughs> and uh, when I get really, really busy in the business, I have no time to be on the business, you know, and it creates that feast for famine cycle. And so you got to have some discipline either way. Correct. I just, it, it's figuring out the percentages of how to split myself up. Um, and I, I've been reading quite a bit, like uh, different books, but 
there's a lot of info out there, a lot. Um, yeah, if you just want my personal misperception, um, I'd say it's as as a as a one point zero unit of person, it's really hard to spend more than about fifty percent of your time in the business. It's it's okay. really hard. Okay. And that's that's about where I'm at currently. Yeah. Um, so once I figure out where I'm at there, my next step, should it be on customer sales um, and marketing or should I focus more on another aspect? Because I'm, after listening to all these, I feel like it should be on sales, but I also I don't. Think, I think you need to do both. I think you need to do about 50-50. Uh, and the reason is, uh, if we're, if we're going to agree that you can only spend about half your time in the business and you're doing that now, it means if you sell something, you had better be more efficient when you're in the business. So I think you need, need to do some groundwork to make your billable client time more effective so that you can do more dollars, get more output, uh, in addition to having the assurance that you have new clients coming. I mean, as an individual, as a, as a 1.0 individual, if I had any client who's giving me more than about 20% of my business, I'm personally worried by that. Um, so, you know, I would try to, to grow the clients, but, but you need to do both. You need to be more efficient uh, with the ones you have, because I think that 50, 50 ratio is it's there for life. Uh, until you develop a team at least. Okay. Um, I have been working with a couple people. Um, if I get to the point where I need to onboard or hire someone else, I've been working with a, a couple people to help me with that. Would that be a good use of my time? Because currently I am at that 50-50 split, um, but it also concerns me because I have two clients and they're the bulk of my workload. And that's not cool because if something happens and one of them is just gone, there goes 50% of my sales. <laughs> yeah, I, I would like to have more clients before I did that. Just my experiences, it's very easy for an employee to come in, uh, make your client mad and you lose your client. Okay. Okay. And, and I've actually had those situations where the the client came in, sat across my desk and said, you fire that person right now or I won't work with you anymore. And, you know, see, I, I, I'd like to see a, a, a few more numbers for your risk that. Okay. I will say that being an entrepreneur feels a lot like being in college, lack of sleep. <laughs> yes. The biggest rather difference than feeling free. You feel like they, everybody's <laughs> pulling you in every direction. You have no control. Sometimes it's kind of funny how. Yes. Uh, yeah. A lot of work, less partying. It's kind of sad, but also awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for. I want to monopolize this time for anybody else. <laughs> Glad you could attend. Good question. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank the um, Missouri SBDC, the SBA, as well as um, the CARES Act funding, which was which was which was able to um, bring this program to you at no cost to you. So 